this is a really great question from Friday's questions, and um, I'm going to give you an answer to the question today. I, I say to ask me anything. Are you struggling with anything? And this is a great question. The person says, I'm on my healing journey. How do I navigate living with people who trigger me? Well, m we'd love it if we could just move away from people that trigger us and not have to live with them, but a lot of us can't, okay? So one thing I really want to highlight about triggers or activations, whichever you want to call them, is they are, message they are messages to say, look here, something needs to be healed, something needs to be addressed. So the first thing to do is just never run away from your triggers. We tend to imagine we're triggered by something and this is us. We tend to distract ourselves and move away from it, go eat a meal, watch a film, have sex, whatever it is that feels better than the pain of that trigger. Or we get angry with it, not you again, you keep coming back. But the only way we can really heal is to, to be in conversation with it, to be in communication with it. So don't run away from it, okay? Don't try to push it aside and um, not address it. Now, I'm not saying you have to stop your life every time you feel triggered, but take some time, go to a quiet, safe place, wherever that is for you, and sit with those emotions and ask what the message is. What does it need you to know right now in this moment of feeling this intense discomfort, pain, I don't know, but it, it will be a obviously a negative emotion. So that's the first part of dealing with being triggered. It's not about the other person as well. It's about they are activating something that is already inside of you. And I use this metaphor a lot, the gun, I hate guns, so I really don't like this metaphor, but it really beautifully illustrates it. So there's the trigger on the gun. The trigger is the smallest part of the gun. It's pretty harmless. What is harmful is the ammunition that's in the gun. So if a trigger is pulled and the gun is not loaded, nothing happens. If the trigger is pulled on a loaded gun, there is an explosion. Ammo comes out and can seriously harm someone, kill someone in a real situation. In a metaphorical situation, it can certainly harm a person and really set them back um, for their self-worth, their confidence, their self-care, all of those things. So just know that when we are triggered, it is something that we've come into relationship with that person already. So it's not that we've come into relationship uh, with them specifically. It's just that they have activated an old wound. So let's say that we were heavily criticized by a parent or caregiver growing up, years of our lives. And then we moved away. We built our own life and we moved away from the criticism. We built confidence and strength and all those things. And this person comes into our life and says something that sounds just like one of those old wounds. And in that moment, we actually, it is, it is research, scientifically researched, that we release all of the same chemicals that we did the first time. So it's literally as we're living the past in the present. And it is extraordinary. We can go from zero to 100 just like that. And then we want to lash out at the other person, most of us do, because we feel that they made us feel this way. But no one can make you feel what you don't already have inside of you. So if you've had that wound and you're carrying it through your life and somebody activates it, it does feel like it's them. But actually, it's the work that we need to do with ourselves. Now, the second part of this question that I'd like to give an answer to is I'm just my brain is screaming boundaries. OK. That's the word, boundaries. This is the perfect opportunity to create boundaries with these people, this person that you are living with. Now, boundaries, and I don't mean this reverently, uh, creating boundaries with another person is like training a puppy. The puppy won't pee on the, on, the, on the carpet or the floor three times, and then it pees on the floor the fifth time or the fourth time. And we think, oh, this puppy is never going to learn. But the puppy does. The puppy learns that it's not meant to pee on the floor because we keep reinforcing that message. Same thing with boundaries. It's like training a puppy. 
we need to keep reinforcing the message to the person in a kind and compassionate way. And this is sometimes hard, but there's a really easy two-step thing to do. Have great tonality and good physio physiological intention. So what I mean by that is have a pleasant look on your face, not scowling and angry and and have good tonality. So you can say um, something like somebody asks you to do something that you don't want to do and you say, no, I won't, I won't be doing that today. Thank you very much. Or no, I don't feel like doing that today. Thank you very much. And don't over explain, don't over qualify your answer because as soon as you do that, you're opening it up to lots of potential holes. People can poke holes in it, right? You just want to keep it very simple. And if the person asks you repeatedly, how come you don't want to do that thing today? You can have a very simple reason. Keep it very simple, okay? The more you have, the less believable you will be. And uh, the clearer it is, the clearer it will be for them. Now, there's a couple of things that happens when you set boundaries with other people is a lot of times they don't like your boundaries, okay? But the boundary is to protect yourself and to communicate with the other person that you are protecting yourself. And that's okay. And people say, well, that sounds selfish. Well, actually, the word selfish is not a bad word. It means to look after oneself. And if we all did a little bit more of that, we would be in a much better place in relationships. I'm not going to go much deeper into it because I'm doing a course soon and we're going very deep into boundaries and it is beautiful work. And just know this, that boundaries needn't be aggressive. They needn't be harsh and they're not endings. They're beginnings. So watch this space and we will be doing much more about boundaries. Thank you for your great questions. Keep them coming. Stay safe. And thanks for coming on this journey with me. See you soon.